Welcome everyone. Um, this is the last talk before the lunch break. So food is on the way. Um, introducing Tim Mitchell. He works with Aaron's Geo, a uh, company based in Christchurch. Uh, so it's his home turf here. And I could see you have quite a turnout. And uh, <laughs> Aaron's is also looking for Python developers. So yeah. if you haven't heard about it, talk to these guys in these t-shirts. They're looking. Really interesting stuff. Um, and yeah, Tim is going to talk about um, database migrations. If you haven't done it, it's a world of pain. So you're in for a treat. <laughs> so take it away. Thank you. Um, yeah, as the slide says, I'm Tim Mitchell. I work for Aaron's Geo. I'm a senior software engineer. I've been there for about 10 years now. Did that not do anything? How do I make it go? Excuse me. Right. Um, uh, we make uh, geological modeling software. We have a whole family of software with three different products, uh, all under the LeapFrog brand. Um, and we do most of our work with Python with some uh, C and Cython for the heavy lifting. Hmm? You can't hear me? I can't do anything about that, apart from look down when I talk. Hello. And hello, I've been walk working with databases since last year. Move this. Speak up. You want me to shout? Okay. So, um, we started on a new project last year, and that's when I started working with uh, real databases. Um, so, overview of the talk. Uh, first, I'm going to set the scene of uh, my working environment, which motivate, in w which I use Alembic for database migrations. Hang on, where's my mouse gone? And you know, give you an example schema migration and some of the things we've learnt to do um, that go beyond the tutorials that you find on the web. Uh, some tips from our experience using Alembic, and also with the really good news about how the pain has got less <laughs> and how our processes have changed since we've been using Alembic. Okay, the situation is we're working on a relatively young product and we're adding features to that product at, uh, as fast as we can. Um, and so because of that, there are frequent schema changes and hence many schema versions. Um, so our test data uh, is at different schema versions because they're written at different times. We have uh, my databases on all the dev machines. You know, they're at their own versions for whatever branch they're working on. We have VMs for the testers running, and they are at whatever version they're on. And we need to manage that whole mess of different versions left, right, and center. Um, and so the situation for us was that migrations were giving us migraines. Um, you'd start up your application and then you'd find that the database didn't have this table. Um, it was quite a nightmare to manage. Right, a little bit about Alembic. It's uh, obviously a database migration tool. Uh, it's written by the same author as SQL Alchemy, which is very popular. It's very straightforward to set up. It's got good documentation. Um, the user form's really good, responds to questions really quickly. The development status is only four in beta, but um, we've only had one or two bugs in Alembic in the time we've been using it, and I think it's more reflection on the capabilities at this point than the reliability. And the last thing is, if you're going to use Alembic, that means the ORM, or rather your source code, is the source of truth. So if there's a table in your source code and there's no table in your database, then it's the database that's wrong. Okay? That's not always the case in everyone's um, setup. Okay. Uh, getting a little bit set up is pretty well documented. I'm just going to mention a few things that we need to know for this talk. Um, Alembic installs uh, an executable into the scripts folder. 
and this executable does pretty much everything you need to do. Um, it has an init command that you can see there and you pass to it a folder where you want to keep the files and it will create this folder structure. Um, the Alembic INI file um, simply points you to the folder that you uh, specified and has your connection string to your database. The env.py um, sets up the actual migration environment for Alembic with your ORM tables and other settings. Uh, there's a readme file for you to delete, a uh, Mako script uh, for templating the create and creation of your revision scripts, and there's a versions folder. And this versions folder contains all your revision uh, steps, upgrade steps as you make them. We've missed a slide. Yay, there it goes. Um, so for our example migration today, we're going to start with the simple uh, um, ORM. It's got one table, it's got two columns, an ID and a name. And our table has some data in it. Some test data. First customer is Mickey Mouse, the second customer is Donald Duck. Now we want to change our schema. Um, the first thing you do is you edit your code to say what you want it to be. We've changed the single name column to be a first name and a second name. However, our database still looks like this. So what we need to do is write a script that migrates our database to match our code. This is what Alembic does. So using the uh, executable, you use the revision command and you can pass it this wonderful flag called auto-generate. And what it does is it looks at what's in your code, looks at what's in the database, figures out what the differences are and writes a script for you. And it also lets you off, um, specify a short comment to say what you're doing. And it's going to enter the versions folder, put this file with, starting with a revision identifier and your comment. And there it has everything you need to do to migrate your database. It's written in uh, Alembic operations, which means it can work on multiple backends, so if you need to support SQL Server and MySQL and Postgres, then this will generate um, the correct code, the correct SQL for all those database backends. Uh, there's also a downgrade function, which doesn't fit on the slide, if you need to roll back your database. Now, all we need to do is run the upgrade command. Um, so the upgrade, the head, uh, just specifies upgrade to the latest revision of your database. We could put in that long UID if we wanted. And you get kabong! And this doesn't happen in the tutorial, but it does happen in real life. Um, and to be fair, you know, the data part of the migration doesn't, is quite hard to document because it's different in every situation. So what do we do? This is reality, but it's not in the documentation. We need to split our migration into three steps. First, we need to add the new columns, but they need to be nullable because they're going to start off having nulls in them. Then we can add the data to the new columns, moving it out of the name column, and then we can alter the columns to be not nullable and drop the column name. For those who are asleep, I'm going to say it again with pictures. First thing we're going to do to our database is make it look like this. We're going to add nullable columns. Then we're going to copy the data out of the name column into the first name and last name columns. And then we're going to delete the name columns and change them to be not nullable. 
Now, SQL Alchemy, however, wrote me add column nullable. What we want SQL, well, it's not SQL Alchemy, Alembic. What we want Alembic to do is to write an, a nullable column followed by an alter column statement. Otherwise, we have to do it ourselves. Thankfully, Alembic will do this for us. We just need to rewrite how nullable columns are written into our upgrade script. And this has been copied directly from the docs. So it has the, Alembic has the concept of a rewriter. You can override how it writes an add column operation. And you can see in the code there, if the, if the column is nullable, then just do it. Otherwise, change the column to be nullable and add an alter column operation. This goes into our env.py file. We need to only do it once, and thereafter all our nullable columns get rendered with two statements. Rewriters are also very useful for other things such as setting uh, permissions when you add a new table and other tasks like that. So now our migration script looks like this. We have our add columns, they're nullable, then followed by our alter columns, and all we need to do is add our data migration. Right, and to do that, we'll just write some normal code. Um, the first thing you need to do is get a connection to your database. So the op object has a get bind, which gets you the SQL alchemy connection. And then you can use the execute method on that to do whatever you like. So this is pretty straightforward. We iterate over all the customers, we split the name, and we update the rows. Now we're going back to migrations. We can upgrade our database to the head revision, and it prints you out. It's a useful little message, and that's the job done. Quite straightforward. And our database now looks like this. What we also have is an Alembic version table, which Alembic puts in by itself. You can control where it's put. And it stores for you the version of your database. Um, this is really helpful so that your database now knows what version it's at. It can know which upgrade steps it needs to run and which ones it doesn't. Now, in some situation, workplaces, you need to um, get your DBA to migrate your databases. And so you can't pass them your script and say, run this Python against the database, please. He's going to say, no way. <laughs> but that's all right. Alembic knows about da database administrators. And he's added, there's a simple SQL um, option. And so instead of actually migrating your database, it's just going to write your script. So easy peasy. Not. None type object is not iterable. We don't have a database connection. We're just generating a script. So we can't iterate over the rows of the table, as you see here. So uh, rule number one when writing uh, data migrations is that you can't actually use the results of a select statement. This is a good thing in reality, because otherwise your upgrade step would upgrade the first customer to be Mickey Mouse, and your second customer to be Donald Duck, and would not migrate the rest of your customers. So it's quite simple in this situation to rewrite your upgrade step to something that doesn't use a for loop. We're using this instra and the substra uh, SQL commands that are in SQLite. And away we go. We can run our upgrade commands. It generates a script. You can give that to your DBA. And that's your job done. A um, couple of tips for using Alembic um, that we've found. 
if you trawl through the docs, you find you can actually run it programmatically. And actually, it's really straightforward. Um, you need to create a configuration object from your Alembic INI file name. And then there's a command module, which has all the commands that you have on the command line. And they're very easy to use. And so uh, we hardly ever use the executable. We run our, our own scripts. And the good thing about being able to customise what you run, how you run Alembic, is that you don't need to use random UIDs for your identifiers. Um, they used at the start of your file names, and you get a folder full of UIDs, and you don't know what order they're in. Um, but they're really good for uniqueness across branches, so I can kind of understand why they've done it. But yeah, sequential is good for us. And so we changed our code to use sequential numbers, 1 to 001, 002, 003, and so on and so forth. And then John on his branch would make 10, and I on my branch would make 10, and then you had two databases with version 10, and then you had a mess on your hands again. So when I get around to committing my code, we're going to start using three-digit numbers followed by a random bit. And this morning I thought to myself, you could just use the comment string as well. Um, so yes, do um, write your own new revision command that puts in a sequential um, revision identifier because then your upgrade steps are sorted in your IDE and in, in your file explorer. Um, yeah, that was all I wanted to talk about when I planned my talk, but when I came to actually writing it, uh, the, really thing, things, the things I really wanted to say was actually how it had made my life so much better and easier. Um, so what has changed for us since using Alembic? Um, I used to do this all the time, just uh, blow my database away, start with a new one while I'm writing my code. And then I'd switch to another branch. And I had no idea what version that database was at because it's been the weekend. So now I always stamp the database when you create one. That way you always know what version your database is and it helps you keep control and manage all the different copies of your database you have all over the place. Um, we had, well, we have, sorry, um, integration tests, which use SQL dumps for our test data to restore the database to a known state. And every time you change the schema, you have to recreate that data in the new schema. Um, and that was actually as much work as the feature or bug that you're fixing. And it was a real pain. Now, we added the version number to our, scheme, to our SQL dump so it knows what version of the schema it's on. When we restore the database, we then run the upgrade steps. Now, when I add a table, I don't need to change the test data at all, except for perhaps if I need a new test data for, my, for what I'm actually doing. That means your test data actually changes a lot less often and makes life a lot easier. It also means that your migration steps get tested as well, which is excellent. Um, for our testers, uh, they always used to use the, the restore utility that came with the database. We used Postgres. Um, and that was fine, except that they had their own, they'd done some experiments, they'd done some stuff, they dumped it and they had dumps at all these different versions, and they'd restore it against your branch, which didn't match, and that was a pain in the butt. So now, whenever we build our software, we build a restore tool that comes with it. And so we know running your branch of the application, they run your restore tool, and it runs your uh, migration steps and migrates their test data up to your version of the schema. And it's made life a lot easier for our testers too. Uh, 
Um, as I've already alluded to, we had a lot of problems with running up the application. It talks to the database, it runs along fine for a while until it hits the bit that's not there. And that happened quite a lot. Now, whenever we start up the, data, the application, we check the schema in the database, matches the schema in our ROM. Uh, we use Alembic for all this. It has this lovely compare metadata command, which produces a list of diffs, which is exactly how the auto-generate command works for generating revision scripts. And you just check if that length is zero. Um, just checking the version number is not enough, because otherwise you'll change a table in the OOM, go have coffee, come back, run your code. The versions are the same, but actually the schemas are different. And you've just forgotten about it. Um, so yes, Alembic has definitely taken the migraines out of migrations for us. Um, and I guess that property is not unique to Alembic, but um, yeah, I hope some of these practices will be useful to you guys. That's all I have to say. Thank you for listening, and do you have any questions? Yeah, thanks very much, Tim. That's all right. Um, questions? You can make me run. Right. Um, yeah, Tim, you've obviously used this as you've been developing the software and you've been iterating so fast that the yeah. database has been changing. Um, but is the intention that it is also part of the release product for the users so that when you go from a version one to a version two that the you, you, your users actually migrate their databases as well or is it just purely for internal development? Um, both. So at the moment that when we install our, uh, our server on a machine, if there's a database if, when you configure it to a database server and, and there's a database there, uh, it'll upgrade it. Okay, so it's envisaged for some of our customers, they'll just install the new, the new software and it'll upgrade their database when they install it. Uh, we know that some of our other customers will have a DBA and I'll say, no way, give us an SQL script, thank you. Um, but, and we'll use Alembic for that and to generate the script for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, as you um, write the actual data migration as uh, SQL rather than using the IRM, um, yeah. I guess there's no way to actually make that uh, back end neutral? Um, you can use SQL Alchemy Core um, functions and methods, um, but yes, uh, you know, for anything that's um, beyond a test example for a talk, then you do usually end up having to use uh, backend specific code. Um, but again, you can with the Python switch on the dialect and you know uh, generate a script for for Postgres and generate a script for MySQL. That's great. Thank you. Does it do um, backward migration, handling rollbacks as well? Uh, yes, it does. Um, I didn't show any of my slides because of space. Um, but yes, it, it writes the reverse of an upgrade step. So there's downgrade steps in all your migrations file. Um, but when it comes to the data involved and we have to manually do all that stuff, we tend not to use them. <laughs> uh, have you done any comparisons with like Django Migrate or South or anything like that? No, I haven't. Um, we looked around, we said, oh, it's written by the same person, let's give it a shot. We haven't had reason to not use it. Um, yes, yeah, so I haven't actually done any real comparisons. Any more questions? Well, I have a question for the audience. Who has used Alembic? Hands up. Keep your hands up. Um, and yeah, we have like two shows. Two shows. And <laughs> you want uh, 
comment any further on the use? Uh, yes, thank you for the presentation. I've only, I guess, used sort of the, the outer wrapper, the vanilla flavor of it. So yeah. uh, you've certainly opened my eyes to the scripting possibilities inside of it. I can see it being a lot more useful. Well, guys, it's almost lunch. Thanks very much, Tim. Thank you.